All right, so welcome to the first lecture on algorithms and this is basically an introductory lecture. What we're going to see here is some basic terminologies and some standard definitions so that we can use them throughout this course. Right, so this course is all about designing efficient solutions or efficient algorithmic solution to a given computational problem. So let's pick an example and try to illustrate the different things. So you are given a computational problem, computational problem, for example, sorting, and the problem is going to have an input and an output. It's going to be an input. In this case, it is an unsorted array. let's say A and the output is, is simply the array after sorting and, and the algorithm is a bunch of well-defined steps which we need to perform on, an, on the input so that we will get the correct output. So simply speaking, algorithm is a bunch of steps. So whenever we describe a problem, we should specify what is the size of the input. In this case, the size of the input is simply the size of the array, which is n. So this is the input size. Right. So anytime we describe an algorithm, we have to describe three things or three components of the algorithm. The first thing is basically the algorithm itself or the description of the algorithm, which is also known as pseudocode. So note that pseudocode is not really a program. It can be just uh, something written in plain English or even with some little bit of math, could be informal, right? So essentially it tells you how your algorithm works, how it works. The second component of an algorithm is known as the proof of correctness. So proof of correctness tells you why it works. So in the case of some algorithms, this proof of correctness might be obvious, uh, but in some cases, you know, we will have no clue by reading the steps. You know, there will be some bunch of steps and magically this will work, right? So in that case, we have to kind of uh, give a rigorous proof on why it works. And usually the techniques we used uh, for proving the correctness is uh, proof by induction, proof by contradiction, uh, sometimes we use pigeon hole principle, etc. Right, the last thing is called complexity analysis. Complexity analysis, which tells you how, how efficient is our algorithm. So efficiency is related to the amount of resources used by the algorithm. When I say resources, it could be uh, the time or it could be the space. So space is related to memory or it could be the power or all of this can be uh, kind of uh, expressed in terms of the number of steps. And at least for the sake of this course, we are mostly concerned with the time complexity or also known as the running time. So, so mostly we are concerned with the time, time complexity or the running time. And usually this running time is expressed 
in terms of a function function t of m where n is the size of the input so this function can be uh, i mean this function can take even multiple arguments so for example in some cases uh, there there may be more than one input parameters so let's take the example of a graph so in the case of a graph we need to specify how many edges are there uh, and how many vertices i mean how many vertices are there right so this t can be dependent on both parameters good uh, so the next thing i need to mention is the analysis there are different kinds of analysis called let's say best case analysis worst case analysis and average case or the expected case analysis and so i think the best case analysis is not very useful because usually it doesn't tell you much right i mean best case is best case right we don't need to worry too much about that and probably the most meaningful analysis is the worst case analysis worst case analysis right so worst case analysis is more meaningful in the sense suppose you have an algorithm and its running time tells you that okay for a given input of size let's say fixed n uh, the algorithm will finish in let's say 5 hours so that means whatever be the input you give as long as its size is bounded by that specific number n your algorithm will be finished in 5 hours it could take less than 5 hours like 4 hours 3 hours 2 hours but never more than 5 hours so it's kind of giving you what is known as an upper bound right uh yes so upper bound so worst case analysis will give you an huh? an upper bound okay so an upper bound and and remember that an upper bound is for an algorithm okay an upper bound is specific to an algorithm at this point i need to mention one more thing known as lower bound so lower bound is this let's take the example of sorting as we know that as we know there are many sorting algorithms with different upper bounds where some is better than the other right so you have one algorithm which has you know some high upper bound then the next algorithm could be an improved one with a lower upper bound lower upper bound etc etc so we can improve 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 and at some point we will get stuck or or after reaching some point we won't be able to improve or we will not be able to come up with a better algorithm right so that means we are stuck at this point and this is called lower bound so lower bound essentially means it's like a bottleneck uh, so in some sense you cannot come up with an algorithm better than the lower bound okay how or smart you may be so lower bound is like a like it's just telling you that you have to spend at least this much time or you have to do at least this many steps to solve it that is called lower bound and remember that lower bound is specific to a problem upper bound is specific to an algorithm and lower bound is specific to a specific to specific to a problem all right um the last thing i want to mention is is what is called model of computation so model of computation is essentially a, you know the set of basic operations you are allowed to perform so in the case of sorting the basic operation is comparison right you are allowed to compare two numbers and figure out if they are the same or if one is larger than the other so that is a 
basic operation uh, allowed in sorting right and, and obviously we can do many other standard operations as well like you know move things around uh, you know read a number write a number swap etc etc right and we kind of assume that all of these standard operations can be done in constant time and typically unit time okay so that is called the model of computation uh, for the sake of this course we assume uh, a model called standard uh, ram model of computation where you assume that almost all mathematical operations almost all basic mathematical operations can be performed in unit amount of time multiplication division uh, etc etc uh, but some more complicated operations like let's say factorial uh, we cannot assume that factorial can be done in constant time okay because when n is too big the factorial is also too big so we might need uh, multiple basic operations right so that is all about the basic uh, definitions uh, and what we're going to see next is few uh, small problems some toy problems as a warm-up so that we can see how some clever ideas can suddenly improve the running time of some algorithms